Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've done an end times update, but I believe I am ready and um, this has been similar to other ones. Uh, it seems like every time I try to do one of these, there's nothing but distractions and things that happen. It just, it's always so hard to, to make one of these videos. I always feel like there's warfare involved. Um, but anyways, um, enough of that. Uh, I'm ready to talk about some things. I know many of you guys are wondering what's going on right now in the world um, I myself am one of those and uh, I spend a lot of time looking into these things I would say hours a day um, reading articles listening to podcasts and things like that that other people are talking about try to get as much information as I can and, and combine that with the word of God and with prayer asking God for discernment an understanding of these things so that I can have a right perspective to think rightly so that I can help others to also navigate um, the things that are going on uh, in the world uh, and right now what I see especially here in 2020 uh, and I said this uh, at the beginning of the year was we're gonna have a crazy year I expect some crazy things to happen just didn't know really know what we can guess but we really just don't know what and now this coronavirus is is here and uh, I believe this is nothing but a shadow of things to come um, I think we haven't seen nothing yet and I don't mean to scare anybody uh, I'm trying to prepare you uh, for what's coming upon the earth and the Bible does that Jesus does that you know in Luke 21 verse 25 this is Jesus speaking Jesus is speaking here to his disciples. He says, there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. He says, there are going to be signs that you can observe when you look up, when you look at the sun, when you look at the moon, when you look at the stars. There's going to be signs that are pointing to the times that you live in. He says, there will be in the earth a distress of nations. We can clearly see that. We can clearly see the distress of nations in 2020, where we are at right now. If you think about all the things that have happened this year, uh, we have the Philippine volcanoes, we have the tension with the United States and Iran, um, we've had uh, the Australian wildfires that were just burning up, um, just so much, so many things we have, you know basketball legend Kobe Bryant pass away um, now we have this coronavirus we have political division in our country we have you know the Israeli elections they had their third elections this year um, just a lot of turmoil a lot of things going on in Syria we have stuff going on with Russia and Turkey um, there's in Africa there's swarms of locusts like they're saying in the billions if you've been paying attention to that in Venezuela um, that that country is just that country is in chaos right now with their social government um, just a lot of things um, happening and taking place there's definitely a distress of nations going on on the earth today with perplexity these things are perplexed they're hard to understand they're hard to figure out it's hard to know the truth of what's really happening um, and so when the Bible talks about perplexity, you know, it's it's hard to figure these things out. So when you come across the things that you don't know, what I've been taught is to come across what you do know. So there's a lot of things that I don't know and don't fully understand on what's going on around the world. I educate myself as best as I can, go to what I believe are truthful and reliable sources to gain the information that I want. But I always fall back on one thing. The Word of God. The Word of God is what's going to help me to rightly discern by God's Spirit through prayer, through the reading of the Word, through asking God for uh, an understanding, for asking God for discernment, asking God for wisdom to rightly divide not only His Word, but what's going on uh, in the world today. Because it is perplexed. The sea and the waves roaring. Men's hearts this is the verse right here that's really been hitting me lately because we're seeing it we're seeing it out there uh watch some videos man watch what's going on at costco right now 
men's hearts failing them from fear. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth. This is the Bible speaking. This isn't me. This is what the Bible says. This is what Jesus himself is telling us it would be like. This is speaking of the tribulation period. What he's talking about here is what the earth is going to go through during the seven year tribulation period after God's people, those who have confessed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, have been raptured up, snatched away, taken up to be with him. And then the tribulation period was going to come upon the earth to, to bring judgment on those who reject God's Son, Jesus Christ, and also for the salvation of Israel, God's chosen people. That's what the tribulation is for. And during that tribulation period, he's saying men's hearts are going to fail from fear and the expectations of the judgments of things that they see happening. This coronavirus has nothing Nothing at all, statistically, on what the kind of judgments and the pestilences and the things that we're going to see, the earthquakes and the seas and the raves war, uh, raves, the waves roaring, the wars and, and all those things that are going to be taking place during the tribulation period. I mean, just a ton of death. If you think it's bad now, the earth is just being conditioned God is waking and shaking people up. He's waking and shaking people up to say what's going on. He's right now if you are wondering what is going on, that's a good thing. You should be I would be worried about you if you were in, if you were unfazed. If you're like, "Ah, oh, this will just blow by. This is nothing. This is whatever, man. I ain't phased." Dude, that's a hardened heart, man. Be careful with that. We should be a little alarmed with the things that we see going on. And, uh, you know, even uh, if you're a sports fan, dude, <laughs> if you're a sports fan. You're just like crushed right now because all the leagues are canceling. You know, kids aren't able to go to college right now. Um, they're trying to they're transitioning to online studies. Um, you know, at work, all the... Uh, 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 all these companies now are sending out emails. I'm getting emails from businesses, from restaurants, and all that, trying to tell you that they're doing their best to, to uh, you know, step up their game and their sanitariness. And you know, even the church now, this is an issue in churches, and it's just crazy. It's crazy, and, and many people are shooken up. Many people are, you know, fear is grabbing hold of them. I've been, I've watched some videos of people at Costco. And literally, there's, and I've heard, you know, from from friends uh, uh, who've been out there. Uh, they're they're out there lining up, waiting for Costco to open. And once those doors open up, man, it's like Black Friday. And they're taking their carts and they're running to where the toilet paper aisles are. You know, we have. A, 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 you would think food would be something that like a necessity. Um, but people are running to get toilet paper, to get sanitary products and things like that. They're so worried of being quarantined. Because we've seen that happen in Italy. The whole the whole country of Italy is quarantined. We've seen what happened in China. Um, and, and they're saying that that's what's coming to the United States. We'll see how this stuff plays out. Um, I don't really know how this is going to go. I've actually been a little surprised. I thought it was, wasn't was really going to be that big. And it just seems to be gaining steam and gaining momentum. Even an article I was reading right now said, be, be prepared for about, uh, about two months or so of being cut off from a social life as you knew it. Um, many events, you know, uh, Long Beach Grand Prix that's coming up out here. It's, I haven't canceled it yet, but most likely going to be XFL. Uh, canceled uh, NBA canceled PGA canceled NHL canceled all these things are being postponed or canceled um, till further notice uh, concerts uh, any kind of, they're, they're, they're just they're discouraging events of 250 or more in some places 1000 or more in others but eventually it'll probably be lower and lower I don't expect the number to grow um, trying to you know keep this disease from spreading and I'm not really going to talk about how dangerous this is. I've already heard all the jargon, you know, comparing it to the flu or whatever. 
what I'm concerned with not only is the physical part and people dying because people are like, oh, well, only if you're old. Well, do old people not matter? You know, I mean, elderly people don't matter. Isn't that a concern that elderly people could die? Do you have a grandparent that you would be concerned about could getting sick? Um, I think that matters. It should, shouldn't just be like, oh, only old people got to worry about it. Um, that's something to be alarmed. And we don't know how this may evolve. We just we just don't know. They don't have a vaccine for it yet. Uh, we'll see how these things evolve. And, uh, and just uh, day by day, really, it's moment by moment. It seems like since I got home from work yesterday, these things have just escalated to a alarming degree. And uh, I don't know what's going to come of this, especially in our country. Um, but I do always, like I said, like to fall back on what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? And, you know, this is what the Bible says. And I just want to, again, not scare you, but to prepare you so that when you see these things um, unfolding, and I don't think we're done yet. There's, this may come and pass, but I think there'll be another thing greater coming. Um, we need to be prepared so that so that you're not shooken, so that your heart doesn't fail, man. And as a believer, you're taking advantage of this to share with others, to share your faith. Tell them what the Bible says. Start reading your Bible. Start gaining information, man. Don't just be lazy. Don't just take secondhand. Don't take mainstream media or listening to what your friends say, man, seek the Lord for yourself through his word, through prayer, and uh, and, and gain an understanding and help to encourage uh, others and help others be properly informed. Matthew 24, verse 3 says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? So the disciples there, they're wanting to know. Jesus has been dropping hints. He's been saying things about what the end times are going to be like. Because Jesus felt this, that they needed to know about the times of the end. And he wants you to also know, because that's why it's recorded here in Scripture. And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. For many, I want to go back real quick. Take heed that, that no one deceives you. We live in a world full of deception. Full of it. It's hard to know truth. That's why we got to stick to God's word. To discern through prayer. Through talking with the Lord about these things. Praying to him. Looking at his word. And gaining an understanding here. Because if not, you're going to be caught up just like everybody else. For many, he says... Here in verse 5, many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. False doctrine, false churches. If you're not going to a church that's teaching about the end times, I'm going to tell you this. That's an alarming thing. They even need to start teaching what the Bible says about the end times because we're living in the end times. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. The Lord doesn't want us to be troubled, not to be scared, but to be prepared. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Do we see that? Do we not see that today? And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, and all these things are the beginning of sorrows. Pestilences, these incurable diseases, these diseases that are just going out there, these locusts, these things that are happening, these wars and rumors of wars, these earthquakes in various places. If you're paying attention, it's all taking place, but it's becoming more frequent and more intense as we get closer to the return of Jesus Christ. He says this, all these are the beginning of sorrows. The end is not yet. He said that the end is not yet. These are just the beginning of sorrows. You guys, this has just begun. And our only faith, our only hope is in Jesus Christ. That's what we focus on. We don't focus on the waves around us. We focus on Jesus Christ. Remember that story from Peter. Don't focus on the waves around you. Focus on Jesus Christ. He is the answer. He's the source of our hope. He's the way, the truth of the life.
and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through him.